Hello and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering draft video. In today's video, I wanted to discuss my approach to navigating drafts in Strixhaven and how to read signals. Let's get to it. So Strixhaven is a little bit different than other sets in the past. The most important thing we're trying to do is identify which college or color pair is open meaning that no one else at the table is drafting it, or maybe just one other person at the table is drafting it. Now this is similar to a lot of different sets in the past, but because there's only five color pairs, if you can find the open one, you're gonna get hooked up real nice and end up with a great deck. Compared to a set like Zendikar Rising, where you were incentivized to start with a really, really strong gold on common and really stick to it, really try to draft that color pair. I think it's more beneficial in Strixhaven to actually stay flexible early and find the open color pair later. So I'm gonna say something that sounds a little bit weird here, but I want you to treat your first picks as though they don't matter. Now, what do I mean by that? Many of you might be saying, what? The most important card in the draft is the one you take first. But if you employ this draft strategy, there's actually a really good chance that the first couple of picks you made, if they were really good gold rares or mythic rares or really good gold uncommons, might not even make your deck at the end. If you start off with a really great card in, say, Quandrix, the blue-green college, and the couple of people to the right of you also happen to open or get past really good blue-green cards, then you're gonna be getting cut the entire draft and it would be more beneficial for you to discover that say Silver Quill, Black White is not being drafted by the people to your right and switch to that. In which case you're gonna be leaving your really good rare in your sideboard, which is not the end of the world. It's just something to be aware of and not be afraid to do. Therefore, I believe for the most part, in your first few picks, you should be taking the most flexible cards, the ones that have the greatest chance to make your deck no matter which college you end up in. All the while trying to figure out which college is being passed to you and is the most open. So how do we do this? Well, here's my order for drafting cards in Strixhaven. In your first one to five picks of the draft, you wanna be taking the very most powerful cards or the most flexible cards. In picks six to seven-ish, you're doing the same thing, but you're kind of starting to read signals, which means you're paying attention to what cards are getting passed to you. Are you seeing really powerful cards in a certain color pair? Are you seeing really good cards of a single color? Have you seen two great red uncommons in a row? This might be an indicator that red is open or that Prismari or Lorehold is open. In picks eight to 15, this is where you're really reading signals. This is the most important part of the draft in pack one, as this shows you what nobody else at the table wanted out of these packs as they've gone all the way around the table and nobody has chosen these cards. Now the way draft works is in pack two, you're gonna be passing your packs in the opposite direction, but in pack three, packs are gonna be coming to you from the same direction as they were in pack one. So for example, in pack one, if you were seeing really good Witherbloom cards coming your way in the later picks, you could reasonably expect to see really good Witherbloom cards all the way through pack three as well as those same people who are passing to you in pack one will be passing to you again in pack three. Now a warning about pack two signals. For the most part, you should be ignoring these as they're gonna be completely different from the signals you're gonna receive in pack one, which inform what you're gonna get in pack three. This is how a lot of drafts get train wrecked. So don't put too much stock in the pack two signals. So now I'd like to go over the order in which I take cards in pack one of a Strixhaven draft. At tier one, we have your great rares, the best cards in the set. I'm gonna do a separate video on all of the rares, but for now, the long and short of it is, if it looks pretty good to you, it probably is pretty good, take it. You might play it, you might not. If you do, it'll be excellent. Some of the best rares I've seen so far are Mizzix Mastery, the set of Elder Dragons, and the flip rares. At tier two, we have the best learn uncommons. These are, in this order, Igneous Inspiration, Divide by Zero, Professor of Symbiology, and Academic Dispute. These are quite flexible as they go into two color pairs each and are quite powerful as they provide a meaningful effect on the game, are cheap to cast, and of course draw you a lesson out of your sideboard. They're also pretty scarce as they're printed at Uncommon, and there's only four of them that I believe to be in this echelon, so you're gonna see them pretty infrequently. So 
I suggest you take them quite highly. At tier three, we've got the card Environmental Sciences all by itself. This is a colorless lesson that you always want one copy of in every deck that you draft. It's obviously really great for splashing, but it's also quite good in just a regular two color deck as there'll be lots of times where you need to find your second color or maybe you're stuck on three lands or four lands. You really need to hit that next land drop. This gives any one of your learn cards the ability to find you that land you need at any time. Now you only ever need one copy of this card. So once you've got the first one, which you should be taking very highly, you don't need to worry about it after that. At tier four, we've got the hybrid lesson cards in this order. Elemental summoning, inkling summoning, fractal summoning, pest summoning, and spirit summoning. These all fit into up to three color pairs. They've all proven to be quite powerful and they don't take up slots in your deck. So you end up getting to play more of the cards that you drafted rather than the typical 23. I believe elemental summoning is the best of them as Prismari, Quandrix and Lorehold all actively want a five mana four four. At tier five, now we're getting into the top uncommons and commons of the set. These will be the cards that indicate to you which color or color pair is open. The one that the people to the right of you are not drafting, or maybe that no one at the table is drafting. This is not an exhaustive list, but these are sort of the, the cards that I would be looking to pick up next. Really good removal spells, such as Heated Debate, Burying Books, Mortality Spear, Closing Statement, Devouring Tendrils, or Rip Apart. The Cycle of Uncommon Students, Dinah, Soul Steeper, Killian, Ink Duelist, Quintorius, Field Historian, Rutha, Mercurial Artist, and Zimone, Quandrix, Prodigy. And here are some other top uncommons to look out for. Bookworm, Creative Outburst, Damagoth, Woe Eater, Decisive Denial, Emergent Sequence, Humiliate, Kelpie Guy, Maelstrom Muse, Master Symmetrist, Quandrix Cultivator, Returned Past Caller, and Snow Day. And finally, at Tier 6, you've got the Campus Dual Lands, the Rare Dual Lands, and the Cycle of Hybrid Mana Common Pledge Mages as those are quite flexible and pretty darn powerful on the curve. So realistically, this pick order that I've just given you will cover you for your first five to six picks. And then after that, you're starting to read signals. Maybe you see some of these really good cards later and that gives you an idea of what's open. By the end of pack one, you should try to have an idea of which is the most open color pair, or maybe there's a couple that are kind of open that you can pivot between, such as Prismari and Quandrix, both sort of pivoting on blue. In pack two, you're gonna start taking cards that will build towards that color pair. And then in pack three, if you were correct about which color pair was open, you should be seeing a lot of cards that will fit in your deck. And at that point, you just have to take cards based on what your deck needs. There's no real pick order for that. I'll be doing videos in the future discussing what each archetype looks like so that you'll have a better idea of what you should be picking up if you're in a particular color pair. I hope this video was helpful to you. As always, please leave your questions and comments below. Let me know how you're drafting this set. Are you using a similar approach? Are you using a completely different approach? Please hit like if you like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me about Strixhaven Draft. And if you're looking for even more Strixhaven Draft content, you can catch me streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash alromusic. Thank you as always for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>